joined production for just four years, the 150 Legacy lived on under the hood in thousands of E-types that followed during the next decade. In fact, the Series 1 E-type was powered by the very same 3.8-litre straight-six XK6 engine that drove the beefed-up XK150S. And boy, what an engine! It pumped out 265 brake horsepower, easily topped 135 miles per hour and could sprint from 0 to 60 in just 7 seconds. When the 150 launched in 1957, standard equipment included a 3.4 litre twin cam, capable of over 130 miles per hour. But in February of 59, Jaguar added a Chrome S Insignia, along with triple SU carburetors, a dual exhaust system, beefed up suspension and larger disc brakes. And the 150 didn't just pack a punch under the hood, it came with a beautiful interior that featured stylish leather throughout. Roll-up windows and door handles were also new features, which until then were not considered essential equipment on sports cars of the day. And the result was a combination of excellent performance and handling, with a level of comfort and luxury rarely seen in sports cars of the period. The long flowing lines of the hood hinted at what was to come a decade later, with the sleek new styling of the E-Type. But its front end, unlike its successor, maintained a traditional look with classic round headlights, the vertical chrome grille and of course the famous Jaguar badge. The tail end of this Jaguar is arguably even more beautiful than that of an E-Type with its exceptional chrome detailing. And then there's those familiar twin chrome exhausts that remind us of the raw power hidden beneath this graceful exterior and of the XK heritage. In March 1961, the first E-Type rolled off the production line and into the hearts and minds of the rich, famous and everyone with an eye for beautiful design. And its predecessors, including the 150, were quickly forgotten. Yet, without its XK lineage, the stunning styling and superb performance of the iconic E-Type Jag would never have been possible. did you go with your first peak? How well do you know your chrome? Here's a quick update. Did you guess it right away or are you still pondering? Take a look at these shots. We're showing you a little more of the car here, so you should be able to pick it. The answer is coming soon. Also coming up, not one but two mules bust out of the stables and go for a run on the open road. So how well did you know your chrome? If you said it was an MGT, you would be right. The MGT was a launch pad for MG, establishing the British mark as a manufacturer of quality stylish sports cars, with the MGA, like the model we saw earlier, following in its footsteps. classic road trip doesn't need a destination or a predetermined route. It's less about getting from A to B and more about everything in between. It's about the experience, the thrill of the open road, the awesome beauty of magnificent vistas, and above all, about horsepower. And when you want pure horsepower, you can't beat a pony. Yep, the classic all-American muscle, your ride doesn't get any better than a Mustang. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to have two. Meet Bo and Bell, a pair of first-generation convertible Mustangs. 
that first saw the light of day back in 1966. These two buttes look as good now as they did on the day they rolled off the production lines almost 50 years ago. Sporting the now famous GT badge, both these Fords are equipped with the original GT equipment package. And yes, just in case you were wondering, that's where you fill this baby up. When it comes to gas caps, they really don't make them like they used to. Both these Mustangs feature fully automatic electric soft tops, an original feature built into the car way back in 66. So now that the sun's up, let's get those tops down and let Belle and Bo loose on the open road. American muscle cars were built for roads like this. They like to go fast and straight. And if the road's clear, nothing gets the heart pumping more than opening up the gas and overtaking whatever's in your way. Mustangs were produced between 64 and 66 and broke all kinds of records when they came out. Over one and a half million pony cars hit the road in just two years and with so many vehicles out there tracking down parts is a breeze. It looks like this road trip has taken a quick detour off the beaten track but as we can see with their short wheelbase and wide track Bell and Bow look just as good on the dirt as they do on the hard stuff. and time to work out which way to head next. Yep, it looks like due south is as good a way as any. These cars came fitted with many luxury features that are still considered optional extras on many modern cars. Power steering, disc brakes and even air conditioning were all standard features on Mustangs of the period. Despite their age, driving these Mustangs isn't very different from driving a modern car. Sure, they won't hug the road and don't have the same kind of turning circle, but in terms of ease, they're just the same. The big difference being that today's cars don't have as much style and charisma. So let's pull over and take a closer look at these two beauties. Both cars have their original pony interiors, with those embossed stallions that remind us of their majestic equestrian heritage. Bo's seats are a classic two-tone, while Bell's upholstery is simple and clean. Both interiors are magnificent and their pristine condition belies their real age. Under the hood, these buttes look every bit as good as they do on the outside. Getting back behind the wheel and hitting the back roads, we can see what makes these cars so special. With their soft tops down, winding their way through spectacular scenery, it's possible to forget that we now live in the 21st century. They take us back to another era, and they do it in a way that only a Mustang can. So that's it for this road trip on another road to nowhere. And what better way to bid farewell to Bo and Belle than to watch these two ponies ride off into the distance to who knows where. Classic cars are everywhere. From the everyday much loved runabout to the rare and valuable collector's items. One thing we all agree, there's nothing cooler than a classic. Like this Lamborghini Mura, once owned by international model Twiggy and still oozing 1960s style. Or this E-Type Jaguar, recently voted the world's most beautiful car. Of course, like you saw in the buyer's guide, you don't have to be rich to drive a classic, you just have to love classic cars. Thank you.